a major restoration milestone approaches. Today they're moving the Elwha into its final channel. They're in the process of switching the channel from the diversion channel on the left side of the river uh, to the, what's going to be the final river channel on the right. As crews slowly peel away the last plug of rocks and concrete from the Elwha's path, small cascades go searching, then streamlets, and finally, these make a river again. It's really surprised me how quickly this project is, has happened. The lower dam is gone. The Elwha may now return to the boulders and cobbles of its original riverbed. Here, for the first time in a century, the Elwha is unharnessed. On this festive 4th of July, the river's renewal is another reason for celebration. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event, something that most of us never thought we would see. All the big decisions, all the big political and economic decisions, which fundamentally drive our culture, arise from natural resource issues. Bruce Brown's 1981 book, Mountain in the Clouds, inspired people to look at the Elwha River differently. The community of Port Angeles made its decisions a hundred years ago on the dams based on the belief systems that were current then and based on the knowledge that they had then. Our belief systems are different and I find that gratifying. I think it's important. I think it's crucial, not just here, but for this country as a whole. The last time journalist Bruce Brown walked these woods, he was writing about the Elwha, its dams, and what they represent. He hasn't had a reason to return to the river in more than three decades, until now. The sound of flowing water is clearly audible from here. Wow. What a sight. The thing I have never seen in my life is a free flowing river above the dam. And there it is. I think that's one thing you can see written on this river. A change that is born of changing circumstances and information that has been learned over the last century. Things we know now that we didn't know before. On steep slopes that once held penstocks for the lower dam, workers see bare soils and carpet them with fabric mats for erosion control. Giant staples pin them in place. A matter of eight months ago, this, this all used to be a Lake Aldwell. The former reservoir is quickly becoming history. What we're standing on now is essentially the area that was about uh, 30 feet underwater uh, when the lake was at full pool. And we're standing on uh, between six inches and a foot of fine sediment that was deposited as the reservoir was drawn down. It's pretty amazing how fast the plants are growing on the reservoir. We have waist-high alders and willows already. Next year, these will be above my head. Uh, this moss is pretty much always the first thing that you see growing, and then the seeds take hold in the little microclimate that that creates. So this whole surface is a, is a rapidly evolving landscape, and every, every movement of the river uncovers something that you haven't seen before. There's been a, a sleeping forest of stumps for 100 years. This is one of the big floodplain cedars that was cut down to make way for the, for the reservoir. Um, you can see the steps that they cut to get up to their springboard notches there. Wonders unveiled, like the evidence of 2,000-year-old trees felled a century ago, will be hidden once more. In the next 50 years, there's gonna be a brand new forest growing up. New paths for water finding its way off the hill slopes into the river. A new places for salmon to spawn, that's probably going to keep me busy just watching the river change for the rest of my life. The river is already sending signals of renewal. Salmon that haven't been in here for almost a century are utilizing their habitat again. It is amazing to see the coho fry. Uh, we didn't expect to see them right away, but that's what nature does. It surprises us. Biologists are finding the offspring of fish moved in the previous year to tributaries above the lower dam. Today's count, some 400 young salmon. These are healthy fish, plus they're chunky. So 
So when these guys reach about six inches long, you'll see them going out to the ocean. In fact, they've already seen some smolts heading out. At the mouth of the Elwha, tribal elders host a sacred ceremony to send the body of a salmon back to the river with news. The ones that they send back are messengers and they uh, bring a message back to the uh, salmon people out in the straits or out in the ocean and tell them, hey, these people are waiting, they're welcoming us back and so come, you know, they come. <laughs> I have a lot of faith in the animal to colonize those habitats in Olympic National Park and thrive. Just knowing their existence, I think, for me, provides some comfort. And uh, the fascination of what they can do. Salmon's access to the Elwha will soar once demolition of Glines Canyon Dam removes their final obstacle. But first, the explosives crew has some challenges to overcome. We have to deal with live water. And we've got a very narrow place to deal with it. The only access to the work area is by crane. So everything has to go in by air. Everything has to come out by air. Explosives, people, drills. We're never more than 10 feet away from a torrent. Hundred and sixty feet more to go before we're done. Uh, it's it's a long ways down there. Coming up in our final webisode, the Elwa River Undammed.